I can't have been the only one excited to walk into the theatre to see Fast and Furious 9, and I can't have been the only one to be disappointed walking out of the theatre at what Fast and Furious has become. After watching Fast and Furious 9 twice, it has led me to think of another racing series, that is, Accelerators. This has led me to make a video essay on why Accelerators is better than Fast and Furious 9. But why specifically Fast and Furious 9? Because movies, or more specifically films, should continually get better as time moves on. Films can improve on core ideas and improve on where other movies went wrong. And please, I had to rewatch that train wreck of a film again in order to make this video. People may say I'm biased, and maybe I am. I'm biased towards good films. If I see a good film, I'm going to explain why every ounce of it is good. And if I see a bad film, I am going to rip into it. Because these are professionals making these films. This video essay will only work if you watch Fast and Furious 9 and the whole Accelerators saga. But I don't really recommend watching Fast and Furious 9 unless you want to have fun, be confused, and be disgusted at story writing. Due to copyright reasons, I'm going to have to do a dub on Fast and Furious 9 segments by myself. With this in mind, I'll ask you this. What are the similarities and differences between this? They wanted to know things, Kurt. I don't know if I talked, I can't remember. We'll worry about that when we get back. <clears throat> Wait, these speakers, I don't have room. <laughs> I never really liked that Teku music of yours anyway. Nola, I've got my brother. We gotta use the EDR! You heard him. We're out of here. Hey. Thanks for coming after me. We're even now. Brothers don't keep score. And this, I think these belong to you, Dom. There's gonna be a lot of people coming after you, Jake. Yeah. This is the world I chose, Dom. You know, Dad wasn't perfect. And he loved us all the same. Someone once gave me a 10 second car, as a second chance. I owe you that, little brother. In Accelerators, there's clear communication between the two brothers. Communication within the films allows the audience to know what's going on, without any guesswork. The two brothers finally forgive each other, which is shown to the audience by Kurt's actions of saving his brother, and Wilde's actions of defending Kurt. Both of these actions are consistent to their dialogue in the car. Throughout the films, both of the characters are fleshed out, with Kurt developing a redemption arc to save his brother, with Wilde finally forgiving his brother. The forgiveness goes both ways, for the way that Wilde has treated Kurt, and for how Kurt betrayed Wilde. Both of these characters mature enough to understand each other, which allows for an earned forgiveness scene. The scene is so unique, as it hasn't been recreated anywhere within the series. It's original with no copied dialogue. Both our vile characters can move on because they have communicated and understand each other. Fast and Furious on the other hand, the scene is a recreation of another scene. It is a cheap attempt to earn a feeling of satisfaction or forgiveness through the nostalgia of a previous scene. The nostalgia makes you think that the development of characters are complete, but it really isn't. This forgiveness is not earned. There isn't even any communication between both of the brothers, despite the fact that Dominic and Jacob are older than Kurt and Wilde, yet are more immature. It's subtly implied that they forgive each other, but never fully, truly acknowledged. The earned feeling is everything. That way you can leave the movie satisfied without any loose ends. Now you tell me what the difference between this.
So you got my postcard, huh? <laughs> and this. If you watched uh, the Vert's Redemption video, you can just skip over this part. Do you see the accelerons, Vert? I've got the Acceler Chargers, Dr. Tesla. <sighs> It's a pretty cool threads. Vert, the drones have captured the other drivers. Can you use the Accela chargers to help them? Breaching the accelerons is what this has all been for. You can't turn back. My friends are in trouble. I have to save them. I can't go with you. A circle. Vert, what's happening? Wisdom is a circle, Dr. Tesla. What you receive, you must give back. Vert! We're going back. When you return, Acceleracer, you will not be alone. Galorum has been defeated! Destroy all the humans! Destroy all the humans! Vert completes all the realms and becomes an Acceleron. Now usually with superheroes we associate the dawning of their superhero suit with the completion of their character arc. The same could be said for when Vert becomes an Acceleron. Vert has learnt to try his best and he has also mastered the skills needed for the realms and even makes the right choice to go back and save his team. Vert, after proving he is the best driver again, puts his ego aside to race the Accelerons to save his friends. Even after he could prove more, even after he could prove he is better than the Accelerons, he decides to make the right choice again because it's not about ego nor pride, it's about Someday you'll find out what's really important. What's actually important. Yes, finding the Accelerons was important to Dr. Tesla, but not to Vert. Yes, proving he was the best driver was very important to Vert, but not now. Not when his friends are at risk. Vert's accomplishments also feel earned, because we've been with him, the characters and their struggles throughout the series. Vert doubted himself, are overcome by his effort to try his best, and when he needed to perform, he did. And he beat Galoran by going through the realms proving he is the best driver. We have seen his struggles and seen his development which allows it to feel earned. That earned feeling is everything. He even makes the right choice to help his friends because he has to. Vert's scene is so impactful because of the other characters' reactions and because of the music and because of his character arc. Sorry for my stutter. Music in conjunction with actual scenes make these moments perfect. In comparison, Han's Return is just another cheap attempt at nostalgia. Again, it doesn't feel earned. We don't see Han struggle. His return is barely mentioned and barely anything to the rest of the team. It basically didn't even matter that he returned. It's even overshadowed by his brother's want for a family, which shouldn't be the highlight for Han's return. Han's return is used as a plot device. Han is used to explain the plot, in which another plot has to be explained. Han's scene is so underwhelming. The music used, by the way, is, I, I put that in because uh, copyright, is so underdramatic. And this could also be due to the fact that there was no build up to Han's return. Even the characters' reactions weren't that big nor surprised, just a whole bunch of underwhelming reactions. The movie felt like it made the decision for Han to return, rather than Han making the decision to return by himself. No one even says anything to Han, nothing is even communicated to the audience, other than, wow Han's returned. The film relies solely on the music and nostalgia for the satisfaction of his return, and a total of four words are said. 
four words. It's like the filmmakers didn't even know how to properly make Han return. A simple plot allows for complex characters. Throughout Accelerators, all of our characters are developed. The plot is for the characters. The realms explain the characters, intentions, and actions. Fast and Furious tries to develop the plot more and more. The characters are used to explain an already complex plot. Accelerators is set in an unrealistic world with realistic events and characters. This is realistic. There's no judging or anything. Our drivers get destroyed and our characters actually get injured. Kurt breaks his leg, Taro gets injured and half of them don't even return with their vehicles. This is not realistic. Fast and Furious is set in a realistic world with unrealistic characters and events. The characters are never even injured. Dom even survives it. Dom survives everything. Even in the movie, everything. Dominic doesn't even get damaged. And the movie even states that they should, they acknowledge that they should be forgiven for making such a trash film. Acknowledging your movie is trash doesn't make your film not trash. I can't even tell you what Fast and Furious 9 is about. It's not even about racing, it's about saving the world from Jacob, then Cypher from the satellite, and I don't actually know what the hell it is. I can't explain it. Accelerators is about stopping the drones. How simple is that? Accelerators teaches us life skills. To believe in yourself and to never give up, despite the fact that you may be doing bad and may be a liability. Accelerators also teaches us to win honestly without cheating because of sportsmanship. It also teaches us that even if you don't win, you should still be happy, because you know where you can improve and you did your best. Accelerators teaches us to do what is right, and as there can be more important things at play, there are so many other underlying themes at work. Forgiveness. Pridefulness and revenge gives you nowhere. We also learn that teamwork and natural skills are necessary to fulfill your objective in racing. There's also, as I said before, forgiveness between Nolan and Talk and Monkey and Kurt. What life lessons that Fast and Furious teach us? Nothing. Family's everything, which is an alright theme, but Dom refuses to go back to protect his kid. How dumb is that? You can't tell us that family is everything, then have Dom leave his own child. Not even two seconds later, Dom leaves his child. I kid you not, he just goes and leaves his child and does the mission anyway. Dominic is family, except he leaves and abandons his brother because of a gosh damn misunderstanding. Now it's so dumb, Fast and Furious can't even get with its own themes properly. They contradict its own scenes. None of the other characters have internal problems, only Dominic and his own brother. And that's the problem. All other character arcs are put to a standstill in favour of Dominic's. Accelerators has all their own character progressions. What I'm trying to say is this. If you make a series about cars, racing, and have in-depth characters, then make it about cars, racing, and in-depth characters. There's no need for these consistently world-breaker plots with the most unrealistic scenes in the universe to try and compensate for your already trash-ridden story. Just make it simple, develop the characters. And that's why Accelerators is better than Fast and Furious.